Hi, this is Archana Anand and in this video, Shipra and I are going to talk about SMT. So what is SMT? The satisfiability modulo theory problem is a decision problem, a problem that can be posed as a yes or no question of the input values. In short, we have a decision procedure to which we pass in the input values and this gives us yes or no as, a, as an output depending on the decision problem that we are solving. SMT solves for combinations of background theories. A theory is a set of sentences that can be used to restrict the models we wish to consider. Number of theories of interest include linear arithmetic, arrays, bit vectors, etc. These theories are mostly expressed in first order logic, which is defined over sigma and it consists of set of functions and predicate symbols. We assume that equality symbol is present in every signature. Variables and function symbols are usually used to build T term. Predicate symbols are used to build T atom. A theory literal or T literal is either T atom or its negation. And finally, a formula is a Boolean combination of T atoms and Boolean variables. For instance, the following formulae is in first order logic. So why SMT? SAT solver are automatic and efficient. However, systems are usually designed and modeled at a higher level than Boolean level. The primary goal of research in SMT is to create verification engines that can, reason, uh, that can reason natively at a higher level of abstraction while still maintaining the speed. Approach to solving SMT formally are based on the fact that SMT can be reduced to SAT. Let's take an example. We have a fee in first order logic and we assign a literal to each term in fee. Because of the structure of fee, the following clause holds. We, this is known as establishing structure of fee. Also, the term this, this and this does not hold true together. So therefore, we derive clause, which is this. And similarly, we derive three other clauses. This is known as establishing incompatible relation between T atoms. All these clauses together form CNF. And this is what is fed into the SAT solver. There are two ways to discover incompatibilities in SMT. First is eager approach and second one is lazy approach. In eager approach, we have solver which consists of encoder and SAT solver. We pass in the SMT formula to encoder and encoder converts everything including incompatibilities between the T atoms and produces SAT solver formula in CNF form. In turn, SAT solver says whether the formula is satisfiable or unsatisfiable. This approach is slow and therefore we use lazy approach. The lazy approach uses a solver which consists of structure extractor. SMT formula is passed into this structure extractor which extracts the structure and pass it on to SAT solver. SAT solver then takes a model if the formula is satisfiable and gives it to T solver. If the formula is not satisfiable, it returns unsat. T solver on the other hand checks for the compatibility of the model. If it's compatible, it returns SAT and if it's not, it returns not good. In turn, SAT solver adds the negation of and of all the models in the new formulae. Let's take an example. We have a formulae in first order logic and we set each term in the formulae to a literal. This is exactly what happened in structure extraction. And this returns a new formulae, which is in CNF form, which is fed into SAT solver. In our case, we are assuming the SAT solver is DPLL. Let's see what happens inside SAT solver. We have a new formulae in CNF form, which consists of three clauses. 
the first thing that we do is choose unit clause and do unit propagation that is set that clause to true setting that to true removes this unit clause from the formulae now since we don't have a unit clause we choose randomly a literal so we choose two bar and set it to true setting that to true remove another clause from the formulae and again we choose four bar randomly and setting that to true removes our last clause from the formulae now we have a model 1 2 bar and 4 bar next we set this model to t solver let's see what happens inside t solver t solver checks for consistency of the model we see that 1 and 2 bar does not hold true together therefore the model is inconsistent t solver then return not good and we add negation of conjunction of literals in model to the original formula of sat solver next since our old model does not satisfy the new formula we backtrack and then we set four bar to false setting four bar to false removes one of the clauses and removes one of the literal from other clause this leads to unit clause of three bar and hence we do unit propagation again on three bar setting three bar to true setting three bar to true makes our last clause true and we have a new model we again send this model to t solver and check if it's consistent we see that 1 4 and 3 bar does not hold true together therefore the model is not consistent and we add negation of conjunction of literal in the model to the original formula now since our old model does not satisfy the new formula uh, we backtrack we now set 3 bar to false setting 3 bar to false makes one of the clauses true and removes it from the formulae now we also remove the literal 3 bar from one of the clauses and this makes that clause empty since this formula is now unsat we backtrack at this point we have explored all the possible values for 3 so we backtrack again at this point we have explored all the possible values for 4 and we backtrack again at this point we can set 2 bar to false setting 2 bar to false remove one of the clause which is set to true similarly it also removes last clause it removed two bar from other clauses now we have a unit clause and we do unit propagation on three with this we have this clause removed and also we remove literal three bar from the other clause at this point we have another unit clause and we do unit propagation by setting four bar to true setting four bar to true makes this clause true and we have a new model on careful observation we see that even this model is not consistent and hence we add negation of conjunction of literal in model we see that a old model is not sat, does not satisfy a new formula and hence we backtrack now we set four bar to false and our last clause is set to true and removed and we also remove four bar from other clauses this leaves one of the clause empty and hence the formula is unsat and we backtrack from here again at this point we have discovered all the possible uh, assignment for four bar and hence we backtrack again at this point we set Three to false. Setting three to false renders this formula 
satisfiable and removes it from the clause. We also remove this literal from the clause and this clause is now empty. At this point, the formula is unsat again and we backtrack. At this point, we have discovered all the possible combination for 3 and hence we backtrack again. At this point, we have assigned all the possible value to 2 bar and hence we backtrack again. We know that 1 is a unit clause, hence setting it to false will make our whole formula unsatisfiable. Therefore, this whole formula is unsatisfiable. SMT solver is a tool that is used to solve SMT problems. It is basically a constraint solver. In this context, a constraint is essentially a statement that specifies properties of a solution to be found. These are some examples of SMT solvers and we'll talk about C3, which is the best solver that currently exists. So how do SMT solvers work? So basically there are a few steps. The user specifies a formula that must be satisfied. In other words, the constraints must be satisfied. And then the solver attempts to find solution that satisfies the formula. If a solver can find the solution, formula is satisfiable. And if the solver cannot find the solution, the formula is unsatisfiable. Z3 is an efficient SMT solver developed at Microsoft Research. It supports all of the SMT theories, ones that are defined right now. It's also sort of a theorem prover uh, as in you can implement the proof structure yourself. Another way of thinking about C3 is that it is a collection of decision procedures. Its main applications are extended static checking, test case generation, and predicate abstraction. It is also open source. So this figure shows the system architecture of C3. We can interact with C3 via SMT library scripts or by using API calls from high-level programming languages such as C++, Python, which basically use a C-based API. Tactics provide the means for pre-processing the input and simplifying it. Solvers essentially maintain a set of formulas and support satisfiability checking. These are the kind of solvers that C3 supports and we'll talk about some of them later. For some applications, it is useful to retrieve models that are also optimal. And C3 supports objective functions which use this optimization module. So this is the standard Z3 SMT library notation. We can add constraints by adding assertions. So for example, this means that A is a variable which is greater than 10. And after you add the assertions, you can check the satisfiability using, using check sat, and then you can get the interpretation that makes the formula true using get model. So here's an example of a formula that is unsatisfiable. We have x greater than 0, y equal to x plus 1, and y less than 0. This is the corresponding Z3 script. So if we run this, uh, we are doing check sat and we'll get unsat. So if we can change this to make this satisfiable, we would do y is greater than 0. This is another example of a system of equations. So we have two circles that add up to 10, and then we have two more equations using square and triangle, and we need to find the value of the triangle. It is pretty easy to solve this using Z3. This is an example of uh, Z3 using Python bindings. So here we are declaring three integers and creating a solver object. And then we add the constraints and we check if the model is satisfiable. So if we run this, we'll get sat and also the values of the variables. So let's go through some of the main theories supported in Z3. 
theories are basically the set of expressions in a formal language. The first one is equality and uninterpreted functions. They're used in first order predicate logic. So uh, the decision procedures for EUF are usually based on union find algorithm. So basically it is a sequence of equality assertions which produce an equivalence class that capture this equality. It is also possible to check for satisfiability of disequalities by checking whether the equivalence class associated with two disequal terms are same or not. The second theory is arithmetic. Z3 allows to solve a wide range of arithmetic theories such as real integer polynomial. This is an example using uh, real values and this is the corresponding formula. Next are arrays. Z3 treats arrays as function spaces. So a function can be converted to an array using lambda. These are a set of built-in functions that are available for arrays. And these are the representations using lambda bindings. Next are bit vectors. Z3 mostly uses a bit blasting approach to decide the bit vectors. So bit blasting is a reduction of bit vector constraints to propositional logic by treating each bit in a bit vector as a propositional variable. So to test whether a bit vector is a power of two, we can use a combination of bitwise operations and subtraction. So there are five main solvers embedded in Z3. The first one is called SMT core. The SMT solver is a, a solver that covers a wide range of supported theories. It is built around a CDCL architecture where theory solvers interact with SAT and EUF model. The theory solvers on the right communicate with the code that exchanges equalities between variables and assignments. The core is responsible for letting each theory learn about constraints and equalities that are relevant for that. The next is SAT core. It is an optimized self-contained SAT solver that solves propositional formulas. The SAT solver also acts as a blackboard for Boolean predicates that express cardinality and arithmetical constraints over literals. These are the other solvers that are embedded in C3, the horn clause solver, the QSAT solver, which is basically a decision procedure for satisfiability of theories that admit quantified elimination. It can be used to check satisfiability of quantified formulas. And the last one is NLSAT, which is a decision procedure for quantifier-free formulas over real reals and integers using polynomial arithmetic. So these are some limitations of SMT solvers. The generated formulas are too large. Encoding is often done automatically and it becomes costly to solve. This influences the size of the generated proof and this impacts the computation of minimal infeasible subset. Finding a tailor-made encoding for a specific problem can drastically decrease the size of the formulas. And empirical results show that the splits can be done at the leaves of the search. And one should also consider eager splitting on the literals that do not appear in the input formula. Research and development of theory solvers are guided by the needs of users. Uh, and some decidable theories do not have efficient theory solvers for example, for floating point arithmetic or real algebra. Some SMT solvers provide a limited support for undecidable theories. In spite of these challenges, SMT has become an extremely active area of research. A rapidly growing library of benchmarks for SMT with a formal syntax exists. Building on fast SAT technology, SMT solvers have been improving dramatically and they're becoming the engine of choice for verification applications.